say, now I believe. I won't believe after a while. I believe right now, tonight, Lord. This settles it. I, now I believe. This thing is slowly now. And, Lordy, now, come on. Now. vexed with the devil. He throws him in the fire and in the water. As we had known today as epilepsy. Said, I brought him to the disciples and they couldn't cure him, so I brought him to you. He said, I can if you believe. For all things are possible to them that believe. He said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. God, that's our cry tonight. Help thou our unbelief. Strengthen us tonight. May we go from here tonight and say like those coming from Emmaus, did not our hearts burn within us? Because of his presence, for we ask it in his name. Amen. And be seated, if you will. The Lord bless each one of you. I know it's very warm in here tonight, when I'm really hot with coming up the street. Just one thing I want to say. I'm just wondering how that our lovely nation, America, is ever going to escape the wrath of God. While coming up the street, seeing ministers standing on the street, along down through the places where wickedness was, preaching the gospel as hard as they could, half-nude women walking by smoking cigarettes and carrying on. I wonder what God thinks about that. No one seemed to pay any attention to him, the man crying out with all their hearts, one here and one there and one over here. We're without an excuse. The gospel's been preached. So we're without excuse. Glad to have you back again tonight, Brother Tommy. Brother Tommy, last night I was seeing some pictures from overseas where he had been in meetings. We were talking about how that said when the good news come that a runner with a torch in his hand running down the trail and through the little grass village crying, Jesus has risen from the dead. We here, we have our great big concrete troughs when the power of God goes to fall, we explain it all away and it goes off to one side. But not them, Brother Tommy. They've got their cups up ready. They want to receive it. They're hungering and thirsting for God. And the first sign of God's a, a goodness to them, they just scream out for victory and receive it right then. Thousands are saved. No, no way to make, hard to make an altar call. Just, just ask how many wants to receive, and every sinner will accept Christ right now. Ready to be baptized, ready to do anything you'd, you'd commission him to do, he's ready to go right then. How different it is in our country. God be merciful to us. I was talking to a brother recently, and he said, Brother Bram, I believe you're just a little rude on that. Said God would not let our nation be bothered. Said it'll always stand this way until Jesus comes. The land of the free and the home of the brave because of our forefathers, what they did. I said, Brother Moore, blessings upon your heart, my brother. 
But God did not spare Israel. When they sin, they reap what they sow. And we'll do the same thing, reap as we sow. I want to read some of his blessed words, and we'll go to prayer. Now, I want to say this, that I certainly appreciate you people gathering out. As I've seen those ministers on the street and met one of them, of all, I forget how many I counted, going around through the street, just coming up, taking my time, how many ministers I've seen, and the biggest crowd among them was about three or four people. No interest. To see you come out and sit in a hot building like this to hear the gospel, I love you. Christian love, I have a respect for you that I can't, can't express. Now, in St. John, the first chapter, in the 44th verse, I begin to read. Now, Philip was of Bethesda, a city of Andrew and Peter. And the fi- Philip findeth Nathanael, and said unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and said unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou were under the tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than thee. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, from henceforth you shall see the heavens open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. If you will believe, just be faithful with the little things, God will show you great things. Right. Believe him, and God will do it. Now, may he bless you tonight. As we pray for the sick, I'll go right into the prayer line. I wish there was something more I could do to help you, but I, I can't. I'm just as helpless as any other man. I'm your brother. I'm not here tonight in the city of Chicago, not by choice but by leading of the Spirit. The very same Spirit that speaks here at nighttime told me about six months ago that this would be this way. And just exactly where all about it and how the things that take place just as it's taken place. Then he tells me then to make ready for overseas. Yeah. So I know it won't be long now. I don't see. There's no arrangements made or nothing, but I'm going overseas anyhow. See? Because he said so. See? We are ready to go. Just at his bidding now, we'll be leaving. Strange, the other night, Brother Baxter and I have been talking, maybe perhaps going to India and just bypassing Africa, because there's two or three groups over there. One of them's Afrikaans, and the other one is the English-speaking. Well, the Afrikaans think the English, anyone who speaks English, they've never got over the Boer War yet. And so they still have it at one another's neck. And one says, let us sponsor it, and let them help them. And say, let us sponsor it, and they won't get together like they did the other time. Because we don't take finances, and we just the offerings are taken up, we put into the treasury, and somehow they, they didn't think they split it up right. So one said there's more Afrikaans than there was this other group, and so there's just two groups of them down there. One's full gospel, another in Afrikaans. One thought one got the most or should have the most because they had most people, or now they don't want to sponsor. I said, get your hearts together. I'll come set it up independent from either one of you and preach the gospel. That's right. Now, let them both come. We want to have unity in God's people. They must have it, friends. We are brethren. We might differ one from another, but we're still brothers. A brother next to me is tall, light-headed, heavy-set, big, chunky-built, pugilist-type boy. But my mother sitting out there is his mother. And my father is his father. He doesn't see, look like me. He doesn't talk like me. There is nothing about me that it resembles him. Well, our habits is not alike. Our ways are not alike. But still, we are brethren. We are brethren. His father is my. If my family will accept him with all of his pe- peculiarities, they accept me with mine. So that makes us brethren. So if God has accepted me with my peculiar ways and you with yours, we are brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Yeah. 
no matter where we go to church, the thing of it is, have we been filled with God's Spirit? That's the main thing. Believe me, you wouldn't be sitting here tonight if you didn't believe in the supernatural. You wouldn't sit there with them little fans and saying like that just for curiosity. You've come here for a purpose. That's to know more about God. And I pray that God will grant it. I'll do all I can to pray for you. The sincerity of my heart. Now, can we pray again, if you will? I, one thing we can't do is pray too much. He said, I would that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Lord, we have no holy hands to lift up, but we lift up Jesus' hands, which is holy. We lift them up, Lord, as Caleb and did that day to Joshua or to Moses, and we pray that the battle will go for the Lord tonight. We know that all the enemies are gathering around. They have come just as close as they can. But we know seated in this building somewhere, around in midair, around the platform here, are angels of the Lord. Decisions must be made. And we stand as a representative of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, may the enemy be defeated. Thou hast promised us that we should cast out evil spirits. That's what you said. And I believe that, Lord, with all my heart, let thy word be truth in every man alive. And may it be proven here tonight that your power will be so predominant that every evil spirit that would try to enter into the person or into the building or has got anyone bound, may they have to turn loose and get away. And may there be a shout of victory everywhere. Lord, may we break the, the picture tonight and let the fire fly. And the enemy will be defeated. Granted, Father, we pray in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Billy? All right. You come in. All right. I get him and some of the ushers together. If you want to get me a drink. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Um, A. All right. You give out prayer card A. All right. We can't. I don't think we could stand 50 at a time, but... We can stand a few of them. All right, let's see. Let's, let's get about the first 10 or 15 to start with and line them up over here if we can. Who's got A number one? A number two? A number three? A number four? A number five? A number six? A number seven? Eight, nine to 10. Let's see that line up first and see how far we get along. A number one to A ten. All right. Let's see how they get lined up. I don't remember just how many we had. I won't know who all is going to pray tonight now. Just praying with all your heart. That's fine. All right. Can you take a few more, son? Can you see? Huh? By five. All right, let's take the 15 and bring another five. A, number 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. See how that looks. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. I hate to drink that water, and I know maybe somebody sitting out there wanting to drink a water. It makes me feel little to do that right after the platform, but I, I rushed away without drinking any water. And I perspire so that even my socks are wet. <laughs> and so I, I just, I nearly starve, and I, for water, I drink much of it. How does that look? 14 and 15 is missing. Look on your prayer cards now. See somebody in there might be deaf or something or can't get up. Is there some wheelchair sitting down there? Look, check her card and see if she's got 15. Is it 15? All right. For, got them. All right. Now, we'll see if we can get some more just in a moment. Now, we'll just, if everyone will, just be seated and be real reverent. Believe with all your heart. God will surely bring it to pass. Are you believing with all your heart everywhere? Now, Brother Osborne, I'm depending on you now to... Pray for me and Brother Bose, you up in here, everyone. You all pray up there tonight, too. Just pray and ask God to help. 
very hard. I know that, you see, the Bible says when the Holy Spirit fell, they were all was in one place in one accord. And probably it was, we don't know why, how the building was, but there was such, if it was hot, there was such a unity of spirit until they didn't even feel the heat, you know. Now, if we could just get that way, wouldn't it be wonderful? Uh, yes, sir. Just be, we know what? Wouldn't notice the heat. Now, I pray that God will anoint every one of us. May he anoint me and my eyes to see in another dimension. And may he anoint my lips to speak just that which is pure and holy. May he anoint your ears to hear. May he anoint your heart to receive my prayer. And if you, of course, now you know this is only through a divine gift, not a gift to heal people, a gift to pray for people, and then a gift of prophetic utterance that, uh, uh, like a seer that sees the vision. Uh, I'm trying to get your attention. See, I know it's hot and bad. Now, first, I've got to have your attention right uh, to me. And then it, it seems like it just builds a wall of faith around me, and you see it just around everywhere. Usually in the big meetings, we never have anyone behind us up like that at all. I have the platform called sometimes epileptic. When they come to the platform, you've seen it many times. They'd scream and jump and carry on and demon-possessed people and things, and you have to be alone because someone could get hurt, see, the way they carry on. Because the devil is just as mean as he can be, you know, so he'll do anything, so we have to, to watch and be careful. Now, we're praying and believing. Now, let me have those. I wish that everyone would just, in your heart, while you're watching, now if I have to say, by your head, do it quickly, see, and, and close your eyes and pray if I ask you to. But when you're looking, you look with a, with a real study face. See. There's something about it. People, they're, the way they're thinking, they, the Spirit anoints them. If you, now this might seem a little strange to a person that doesn't believe this way. See, if they are unbelieving, it's the Spirit of the devil anointing that person. It's pulling right down like that with disbelief, you see. And I can feel that. You tell it. Yes, sir. And it, it makes it hard. And then if a person is really believing, they're pulling in the Spirit of God. See? Because it's the Word of God. We all know that. And if the devil can just put a question mark across there, he's got you. But when you raise that question mark and say, that's ever bit true, and it's for me, then, then you're pulling from God. May the Lord bless us as we talk to the woman. Now, I suppose that we're strangers, are we, lady? We are. All right. Now, I want you tonight, each one in the line, I don't believe there's anyone crippled or anything standing very, to stand very long. Let's just take our time. Everyone just let your nerves down now, and let's just talk to the people, pray with them. And do not be excited or nervous, just closely. I'd just like to talk to you a little while, like uh, Jesus talked to a woman one time. And um, now if we are strangers to each other. Then the only way that I would that I would be able to know you would have to be through Jesus Christ. Is that right? Yeah. Well, now, of course, Satan has a way that he knows some things, but he doesn't know all things. If you're watching these little psychic readers and so forth out on the street, it's just about one percent they're right on. They're just guessing at it. But God is perfect every time. The devil just got a. The devil has a pattern of everything God has real. The Babylon was made a pattern of heaven. All the natural things. Just exactly. There is a real, genuine Christian filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a whole lot of hypocrites that just act like that. See? Oh, that's right. see? But that really, the hypocrite only declares the real person to stand out bright and shiny, doesn't it? See? All the false and bogus things. Only declare the real. If we pick up a bogus dollar, and I look at that dollar, and you say that's a bogus dollar, or counterfeit, that only tells me one thing: that there's a real one somewhere. That's right. Or that wouldn't be a counterfeit. As long as it's a counterfeit, there's a real one. Is that right? That's right. As long as you see an act of the devil, just remember he's impersonating something of God, a real one somewhere. See, that's right. Just remember when you see that, that's what it is. Now. If our Lord was here, I 
you perhaps are a sick person. I, I do not know. I can't tell you that. But if you was a sick person and our Lord was standing here, now he, what could he do for you? Nothing but just talk to you. He might lay his hand upon you. Or he would, he would be empowered with a vision. And uh, he would be able to tell you what the Father had to say. And he could only say what the Father said. Is that right? That's all he could do. He said, I can do nothing of myself. Just what I see, that I speak. See? And my words are true because the Father has sent me. See? His words are true because God vindicated that be his Son. Now, he, you believe him that he died and rose again from the dead, and I promised the things that he did that we should do also. That's his church, his believer. Well, then, if he is standing here, he would tell you, perhaps like, like Nathaniel, he'd say, uh, uh, you, whether you're a Christian or not, he'd tell you. And he'd tell you something that you've done. Maybe a, a year ago, maybe two years ago, maybe a week ago or an hour ago, he'd tell you something like that. Like he told Nathaniel, said, I saw you when you were under the fig tree. Well, he said, you're the son of God. Well, then, if he's the same today, he could do the same thing for you, could he? Do you believe he will? You do. You are suffering with a, a cancer. It's horribly, horrible condition. You've, it's in the breast. And you've, one of your breasts, it's been removed. And the cancer has crossed over into the other breast and it's come down through the abdomen too. Abdomen. God bless you. You are a Canadian. Yes, from Ontario, and you flew in here by plane, your husband. Is that true? That's true. Do you believe, he, sure you believe he's going to make you well, don't you? Yes. Come here and let's ask you. Lord Jesus, poor little woman standing here seriously ill, knowing no one can help her but thee. She's broken hearted. She wants an extension of life, Lord, to serve you. God grant it tonight. Yeah. Forgive us of our sins yeah. and trespasses. And let her live, Lord, to glorify yeah. thee. And Father, make her well. Way up in those big, beautiful pines there. May her testimony stand out. If you'll heal her, Lord, I promise you to go into that country there and preach yes. the gospel. Amen. This will be a sign. Yes. I ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. What is your name? Or Mrs. Parks, I want you to write to me in a few weeks from now telling me what's taken place. I've made a vow to God. Yes. God bless you. Yes. Go in God's peace on you now. Hallelujah. Everyone should believe right now. Everyone should never doubt no more but the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, before the anointing gets too deep, we all know what was even told that woman will be tomorrow when I pick up the tape. Mr. Bose was testifying today about something that happened like that, wasn't it? Yes of a woman somewhere, it's all blank to me now, but it's something about a woman, a German woman, I've seen a vision and couldn't stop or something, I've seen a white man included around a colored woman, and I couldn't make out what it was, and I was upset, isn't that the way it was? And there's a Mohammedan or Hindu or something on the platform, I couldn't understand why I could see a, a Muslim worshiper at a platform and me speaking. Somewhere at a Muslim, seeing this woman and then recognizing I was in Chicago, I couldn't get myself straight whether I was in India speaking or in Chicago. And then I seen a white man, uh, look, the kind of a light looking, like a German that was included in that. And I couldn't get it, and it shook me so. To I went ahead and prayed for the woman or something, and I looked down to another woman and told her something, and she was suffering with something, and the woman was. At that time, praying for her brother, is that right? That's right. Is that? Yeah. Brother was going into the Muslim, the religion in Germany. Going into the Muslim and the religious uh, religion of Muslim worship in Germany, and she was praying. And that man was standing from Germany here before me. Yeah. The Muslim was open, and you could see. And I couldn't get it because being not used to being here and 
in Chicago and seeing that, it kind of says, is that right, Brother right, Jose? Right, right. <laughs> it, it's, you never know, friends. But our Lord Jesus is marvelous, loving, full of compassion. Oh, my. I wonder tonight if he was standing here in a body of flesh, where would he take the flesh to when he's seen the wickedness of this world? See the end time approaching. What would St. Paul do if he was standing in Chicago tonight? They'd probably, I don't know, they'd probably have him arrested. Him seeing his words that he spoke under inspiration, how they'd be having a form of godliness, benign the power thereof, and how that the things would be taking place, hard telling what he would do. All right, bring your, was this, how do you do, sir? Uh, well, it's a very warm evening, isn't it? <laughs> yes, sir, very warm. But our, our blessed Savior, there's something so sweet about him that when we're near his presence, we don't notice uh, nothing but just him. That's right. Now, I suppose that you and I be strangers. I probably don't know you. As far as I know, I've never seen you in my life. You never met me before. Yes, sir. Well, then, but our Lord Jesus, down through the span of life, he knew you when you were born and before you was born. And he knew me the same way. And all down through life, he's fed us and taken care of us. And what we are tonight, we are by the grace of God. And that's why we're standing here tonight. And I'm standing here as your brother to do anything in the world that I could to help you. And if I didn't think that God would answer my prayer for the sick people under this commission of an angel who met me, my dear brother, I would be home tonight with my family. But I'm... I'm here, and I have a little church down there. I'd be preaching in it. Just have my service and go on and do my rest of my work and be along with my babies and so forth through the week. But I believe that God has commissioned me to do these things. Therefore, I come to help you. To help you what? To believe on the Lord Jesus. See, it's all I can do. What all that can be done for you, he's already done it. But now the only thing, maybe just something to kind of boost your faith up, to see it, you know, that's why you're here, isn't it? To try to receive something from God. That's right. Now, the, but he, he will grant it. No man ever come to him empty and went away desiring to be filled by what was full. And those who come full, they went away empty. But you come emptying out your soul for your need. You are a sick person, and your, your trouble's in your neck. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. That was caused from an accident. I, it seemed like I seen a big something drop, it, it was a bale of hay. It struck, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it was. When you look this way, something struck. You're interested in somebody down here. It's that baby laying there. That's your son. Correct. Is that right? Correct. I see it before you again, waving in your arms. You believe he's here to help you, brother? Yeah. Come here. Oh God, author of life, giver of all good gifts, send thy mercy upon this man who I ask for mercy for. Grant, Lord, the healing of him and his uh, people also. And may thy spirit be upon him, Lord. May he be blessed and helped. May he be healed. Your glory be upon him, Father. I pray this blessing as I lay hands upon him. In the name of Jesus Christ, now hold him close to my body, not that there be virtue in man. But we remember Elijah who laid his body upon the dead baby, and it came to life. And I pray that you heal this man in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God, peace be with you, brother. Go in peace. God, heal you. How'd he do? My, you're a fine-looking little lady. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ uh, died to help you, honey. You do that. Now, you're just a little girl, see. And your little mind is innocent yet. 
But and now I, I, I can talk to you, see, and God will help you because you're just a child. Uh, if Jesus was here tonight, standing here at the platform, now he would he come over. He loved little children, and he'd take and look at you, and he'd lay his hands up on you, and and if there's anything wrong with you, why you'd get well, wouldn't you? You get well. That's the innocence of a child. That childlike simplicity is what touches the heart of God. She knows right now that something's taking place. The little girl, the Spirit of the Lord is on the child now. And he would make you, he bless you, and you get well. You believe that, don't you? Now, do you believe that he has risen from the dead and he's here tonight in the form of the Holy Spirit? And then he lives in his church? That may be a little deep for you. But do you believe that Jesus sent Brother Branham to, to do his work? You believe that? You do. You've got something. It's, it's in, I can't. Yes, it's in your nose up in here. You kind of have a like a sneezing or a hay fever or something like that, isn't it? A hay fever. <laughs> I could see you keep holding your nose and your eyes turning red and things. I couldn't make out whether it was just your subject to bad colds or whether it was. But it's a hay fever. Now, honey. Hay fever isn't a disease. Hay fever is the little skin that's in your nose. Some people have three layers of skin. Others have two layers of skin. And some just has one layer. When them little burrs get in there, that's what causes it to burn and hurt like that. Makes you sneeze and have headaches and everything. And just a moment. You've had an accident too, haven't you? You fell out of a car. And it hurts you in your spine. Isn't that right? That's right. And you've got a father that's with you, that's brought you here. And he has a hernia. He had just been in a healing meeting of some sort. There's a man that's kind of tall, black hair. I believe it was Brother Freeman. Is that right? They prayed for him. Is that true? And your mother's sick. She was at the doctor, and he said she had enlarging of the heart. Is that true? Do you believe God will make all of you well? Come here. My Lord, my Father, I pray thee to be merciful to this little girl, and bless her, Lord, in whom I bless in thy name, and to this innocent little child. Thou hast said in thy word, Whatever you bind on earth, I will bind it in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I will loose it in heaven. We know that you are here to confirm your word. And you confirm not one of your words, but all your words. Therefore, as your representative, I loose this child of this demon in Jesus Christ's name. May it go out of her. Now, honey, you're all right. Now, you go home, and when you go to your daddy, you lay hands over on him because he hasn't gotten well yet. And when you get over home, take this same hand and lay it on mother. She'll get well, too. God bless you. you do. Let us say thanks be to the Lord be to Jesus Lord. Christ, who gives us our victory tonight through Calvary, through his blessings. Oh, we say praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. All right. Would you come? I just want to pray for your baby. Put your hand over on its little head to watch. Lord Jesus, my heart's just aching for that little one. I pray thee to be merciful. And the mother with the hand on the child. The very fruit of her womb. The core of her heart. Oh God, take away everything and may the baby be healed. We ask this in Jesus' name for God's glory. Amen. All right.
Be of a good courage, Mother. I tell you what you do. When you go home tonight, the evil one left the baby. Now, it's been prayed for and everything, and you're a little bit, you're, you try to make yourself with an emotional face. Don't do that. Just have a solid face. You take that baby home tonight, and you see whether I've told you the truth. You put a string around his head and measure, and cut that string off even. And then, in 24 hours, put that same string around there, and you'll cut something off of the string. You'll know that I told you the truth. Hallelujah. And if that's true, then you remember, I, then have faith and believe. How do you do, sir? I suppose that we are strangers, you know. God knows us both. He knows all about us. He fed us all the days of our life. And everything that we ever was come from God. And all that we ever will be will have to come from the goodness of our Heavenly Father. Look this way just a minute. I'd like to talk to you just for a few minutes. You are, uh, you believe now that God is, I wish you would stand right here if you would just a moment. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, sir. Um, you suffer with a stomach trouble. It's a nervous, upset stomach, keeping you upset all the time. You're not from this city. You come from, I'd say, Ohio, near a lake old Cleveland. Is that right? You're assembly of God preacher, and you've been to the general council. You're on your road home. You've got a sick wife. Where's that handkerchief? You've been saying that you just go bring a handkerchief and it here to me. That's for your sick wife, isn't it? You believe she's going to get well? She's got an inward trouble she's suffering with. Lord, be merciful. Grant the healing of his wife and also of our brother. May you go and God's peace be upon you. In Jesus Christ's name I ask you. Amen. The home lady is on her. You'll both get well. Amen. Amen. Aren't you suffering with a nervous trouble sitting there? And you're a preacher also, aren't you? Stand up. You was healed the same time. He was You was healed the same time. God bless you. Excuse me. I didn't know that was sitting there. But okay. The same thing that was wrong with that man there was your trouble. All right, you're well now. Go oh, and God bless you. Oh, how you should believe on our Lord. What more would he have to do? <clears throat> well, you have faith in him now. Believe him with all your heart. I begin to get weak. <laughs> well, how do you do? Do you believe with all your heart? You You're in trouble. You're not sick, only you're nervous. You're upset. It's a mental distress like because you're halting between two opinions what you must do in life. Yours is not a sickness. You have a child, don't you? A boy. You're having family trouble at home. Isn't that right? You don't want a divorce in your family. You don't know what to do. And you're not from this city. You come from Michigan. Is that right? Now, you believe with all your heart, God will grant you your, your request. 
I pray there's only one thing you can do. That's believe on the Lord. And then you go and I advise you one thing to do. Go receive the baptism of the Spirit. Live for God all your life and everything will work just right. Now, if God can tell me what is your, what was your trouble and what is your trouble now, he can surely tell me the way out of it. Is that right? That's your avenue. Will you receive it? Come here. Lord, be merciful to this woman. Grant unto her that she may receive the Holy Spirit and may all of her troubles leave. Grant it, Father. I bless her for this purpose in Jesus Christ's name that the baby will be raised in a Christian ad- atmosphere, both father and mother filled with the Spirit. Grant it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, your husband is with you. But when you go home, I trust to God that you will find it different. Are you going to believe you will? Now, just as you believe, that's just what I know he does. But I say when you go home, you're going to believe you're going to find things better. He's going to receive you and things are going You believe that? As you have believed, that's just the way it will be to you. God bless you. Peace of God be with you. Young man sitting up there in the balcony, you kind of have a spiritual trouble too, don't you? Mental distress, upset. Is that right? You want to accept your healing now? Stand up on your feet then. Accept your healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, young man. Believe on the law. You want to get over heart trouble, lady? Say, I accept my healing. God bless you. Father, may she receive this now. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. God be with you and go with you and help you and make you well. All right, have faith. All right, come, lady. Are you believing? Well, if she was healed with heart trouble and you at the same thing, can he heal you too? You believe he will? Yes. God bless you then. Lord, I pray that this will be so. May her faith not fail in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Have faith in God. Believe with all your heart, God will grant it to you, your desire. Little minister, you believe on the Lord now with all your heart. If you do, you'll receive what you've asked for. God bless you. You go back to your church a different person. You'll never go blind if you'll receive Jesus Christ and believe with all your heart that he makes you well. Do you believe it? Go. God be with you and help you. All right. You believe him? See better now. Sure, it's gone from you. The blind spirit left you when you raised up. I go and sin no more. You believing with all your heart? Amen. How do you do, young lady? Do you believe that you're standing in God's presence in his sanctuary here tonight? You do. You believe me to be his servant? Do you believe the story that I tell about that angel is the truth? You do. Sister, <clears throat> you're anemia. There's something wrong in your blood. Turning water. And now, but you'll never get any better until you get straightened up with God. You know that. And you know what I'm meaning right now, so I just won't have to say it here. But will you promise that you'll serve God all your life and you'll, all these things you'll just forsake and go on and serve God? Will you do it? Then I'll go right down there to the altar and kneel down and straighten that up with God and you'll get over that anemia condition. God bless you. Hallelujah. 
have faith and believe with all your heart, God shall bring it to pass. Now have faith. Be merciful. Believe with all your heart. All right. Will you come? How do you do? You believe with all your heart? Kind of a tumorous condition, isn't it? Something about the nose. It's up in your nose. It's gross. Inside your nose and could be tumor. You also have a varicose veins. I see them on your... You know, few people know that. But God knows it. Do you believe I asked him along with this church people here? We're here deeply and sincerely. Do you believe he'll let you get well? Come here. Merciful Father, grant that the curse of this sickness, disease, will leave the woman. May she go and be made well. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask it. Amen. Thank you, God bless you, sister. That's the way to do. Go believing with all your heart. God bless you, mother. You know something struck you there. See? That was your faith has been coming because you've been praying. And even in the rest of the meetings, you said, if I could ever get up there, I'd be healed. And that heart trouble would leave you and you wouldn't be bothered with you. Isn't that right? I'm not reading your mind, but that's what you said. Now, as you have believed, so has it happened to you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Believe. You sh- There's nothing can stand in his presence as long as he's here. Do you all believe? Amen. With all your heart? That's the way. The only way you can be made well. Besides your eye trouble, you have a, something in your side, too, don't you? <laughs> when that man passed a few moments ago and I said about eyes, a real cold feeling went over you, didn't it? That's when you were healed. I just want to be sure that I know what I'm talking about. God bless you. <clears throat> you had an ulcerate stomach. I go and eat what you want to. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You also had ulcerated stomach. You got female trouble too. Do you believe that He makes you well? God bless you. Go and may the Lord God bless you and make you well. Amen. Have faith in God. If you can believe, Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. You want to get over that gallbladder trouble sitting there, sister? Yeah. You want to get over it? Well, just accept your healing and God will make you well right there where you're sitting. <laughs> Amen. God be with you. Poor old thing sitting there praying. She, you were very kind to that woman to help her up there. You have a trouble too, don't you, sister? I see a darkness around you. It's concerning your husband at home. Isn't that right? Mentally distressed. Isn't that right, sister? Let you stand up and let you and I have prayer for him. Lord Jesus, we feel so sorry for our brother. May he be healed. Grant it, Lord. May he get well. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. God bless you, sister. How long you have faith? Are you believing, lady, with your hand up praying over there, the colored lady sitting there? You believe with all your heart? You believe me to be his prophet? You do. If God can reveal to me where your trouble is and what, will you accept Jesus as your healer? You will. All right. You got a tumor. 
you got stomach trouble too, have you? Now, do you accept Jesus as your healer? God bless you. <laughs> Wasn't that a strange thing that struck you just then, sister, sitting, the white lady sitting right this side over there? Because you had kind of a condition too. It's on the on your shoulder. Is that right? A tumor of a kind. Is that right? All right, that's when it struck you all. Oh, God bless you. Now, the next lady's got her hand up there, too, sitting right next to you. Do you believe me to be his prophet, lady? The elderly lady sitting there? You've got the... Uh, you've got veins. It's a very coarse... Very coarse no, it isn't. It's something in the vein. It's a... Uh, it's inward, it's hardening of the artery. Isn't that right? I seen the vein, but it was on the inside. <laughs> all right, go home now and get well. Oh, Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 yeah. Jesus Christ, make you. Have faith in God. A little minister, I trust that God will give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fix you up, give you the desire of your heart, the little Methodist preacher sitting there. God bless you, brother. There's a woman sitting right behind you there. It's weary. She's concerned. When I was talking to this lady here with the flowers on her hat, it was, she's concerned, too. It's about a loved one, I believe. It's in a hospital. You bleeding with all your heart? A soldier boy or something or other. That boy's in a country where there's a lot of big pine trees are blowing. Isn't that right? He's kind of, there's something wrong mentally. He's in a hospital. And I'm going to say that's either Washington or Oregon, one. Is that right? Washington. A government hospital calls to see orderlies with soldier clothes on ministering. Is that right? Let you and I stand up and pray for the boy. Almighty God, across this nation, down on the other side, that lovely country, I pray that God Almighty will send down his blessings upon that poor boy that was suffered. And I pray that you'll heal him and may he get to come home be normal and well. I pray, Father, that you'll grant me, along with the rest of thy church, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Already can be made well. How many more? Just this one. Now, before the lady gets here, she's dead. Let's bow our heads, everyone. Almighty God, author of life, giver of every good gift, send thy spirit upon this woman and bless her who I bless in thy name. Creator of heavens and earth, be merciful to those who are deaf. We realize that the spirit of the devil would cause them to be killed if he could. I pray for mercy for our sister, and may the enemy leave her this night, and may she serve you all her life. I ask this deaf spirit to leave the woman. Come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Say amen. I love God. Now let me try back. I love God. Praise the Lord. You are healed. Here she can hear it normally. Listen. Let's see. It was the left ear. Was deaf. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Female trouble. I've just seen it left her just behind the brother Ryan. God be merciful, right? Oh. oh, Father, you hear that, Lord? I pray that your spirit settle over this building just now. Oh, eternal God. How long will you suffer the people? May it be so tonight that every believer here will receive their healing just now. May they look there to Calvary where we're humbly trying to represent. Bless, O eternal God, 
And may each of them be healed tonight. May there be no doubt in their hearts, but may just now, as your servant is very weak, I pray that the prayer of faith, I believe, Lord, that I get what I ask for, for I ask it in the name of Jesus. And your scripture cannot be broken. And you said, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it, you shall have it. I now ask for every demon that's bound any of these people to come out of them just now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Rise and accept your healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.